Hello, and today we are going to be doing a technique that is one of my favorites. It's called color press and emboss. I've done this in a past blog, but I decided let's revisit it because some things are better in video than in words. So enjoy! Today I am using my Mystic Mermaid by Uni Stamp Company. Um, any stamp with some sort of liney texture or sketched design works really good with this technique. Um, solid ones just don't work as well. So stick your paper in any stamp positioner you have, whether it be a Misty. In my case, I'm using a Stamp Perfect. And bring out some markers. Today I'm using Distress Markers um, because they stay wet longer. Um, this is going to be any dye based marker. It does not have to be distressed. Um, alcohol markers do not work well in this technique at all because they dry way too fast. So put your stamp where you want it on your stamp positioner. Line up your paper. Uh, this technique does require a stamp positioner because you're going to be re putting each color down on the same piece of paper. So doing it with a block is next to impossible, unless you are like a pro. So I'm starting my first color. I usually go lightest to darkest. And I'm going to color her skin tone in. And the nice thing about stamp positioner is you can actually position your paper if it gets loose or moves back to where you started. That way you don't lose your alignment. Alright, now I'm going to speed this up because honestly coloring these stamps does take a little bit of time. Um, this technique is great for like any of these little liney stamps but also for scenery. Um, if you know you're going to make a sunset behind a tree line and you want those trees to have green leaves and brown bark, this works great because you can color in your design, emboss on top, and then do whatever color you want behind it. And it doesn't affect what you stamped. Or, like I'm going to be doing in this video, coloring your stamps with Copic markers. It keeps your Copic marker in the spot where you want it and you don't go over the lines. Or just even just to have that glossiness on your stamp after, image after you stamp it. And now we're getting into the tail. You know, you can even layer different colors. Like if you want to make her tail, like I'm doing one color right now, but if I wanted to do three different colors in her tail, make it really ombre, I could. It's the fun part of this, you can do pretty much whatever you want with this layering of color. And you're just going to keep on going until you get exactly where you want it. And as you see, I'm doing this in phases. I'm not covering the whole thing and stamping it because the ink will start to dry and you won't get as rich of a color. So sometimes doing little sections is better, especially when you have a big section to stamp. Now we're going to do the jellyfish. And last, her little bubbles. And today I'm doing this one on pearl cardstock from Neiman. she is. Now you're going to clean off your stamp before you start the next technique because you don't want to make your Versamark or embossing ink pad dirty so really set it up. Go after it with a dry cloth get all the moisture off because you don't want the two molds or any mark you know dye ink water based marker to react to the water because then it will blur your image. So now I got her nice and dry. I'm going to come in 
with my embossing ink. I'll use the Ranger. And just really ink up that stamp with that embossing. right on top of your new stamped image. Now I'm going to take my clear embossing powder from Recollections. You can use any clear embossing powder. I like the ones that have the shine in them only because it gives them a nice shine and it's easier to see that you've embossed it all. I know some lines have a matte. Sometimes that's hard to emboss and know that you've embossed it all the way. Now I'm just going to heat emboss this and you're going to see the colors get really vibrant. One thing I know is about this technique too is it really makes your colors of your inks pop. That just having that little shine makes everything brighter. and heat embossed all the way through. And there is our mermaid. And there she is. Now you can leave your mermaid like this or you can color it. Today I'm going to do it in a coloring technique with my touch markers. So I'm going to color my mermaid in and I'm going to start just like I did with the embossing. I'm going to go lightest to darkest. Now you could get really fussy and do your tones with your markers or you can just color. Um, these and this one, since the picture is so detailed, I'm just going to color. I'm not going to go into skin tones. If I had big spaces where I could do skin tones and stuff, I so would, but because of the fine detail, I'm just going to stick to just coloring. So get her all colored in, and now I'm going to speed this up, because as you know, just as a stamping, coloring takes time. I'm going to color in all the flowers in her tail. And I think this actually brings out the mermaid a little bit more than just leaving her as an outline. I have left her as an outline. She is very pretty even as just an outline. Um, but in this case, I thought, let's do something different. Let's color her in. Now, I did find on the pearl paper that the colors muted a lot in both the ink and in the alcohol marker. Because there's that film on it that has that pearlized and it does come off as you color it because of course the film is a temporary film that just gives that pearl sheen which is fine because the image is what's important and I want the pearl just to be in the background I did do other ones like in the same technique which we will see later in this video where I did it on regular paper um, regular white cardstock and I have to say it did come out a lot brighter so as we go in with the pinks next you're gonna see the colors pop and yes I know these are knockoff Copics I did not splurge on Copics because I'm not much of a Copic colorer and I just wanted something to play with and learn as before I went big and bought something I didn't enjoy using. And now we're going in with greens. Here I'm coloring in the leaves that are in the flowers in her tail. The one thing I do find if someone is trying to find a beginner Copic these are nice, they do bleed, and they don't have the line coloring 
you know the colors in a line that you can just pick up the next color as Copic does. I mean when they put their colors together you can pretty much pick one two three in color. You know here I have to usually test the colors out make sure it's what I want. The colors on the cap do not always match what the marker color is. But if you are fine with learning that way it's fine. I just wanted to see how I felt about coloring with Copics before I invested in a high-end marker. And I'm starting to enjoy using them, so maybe sooner or later I will invest. And as you see, the colors are really popping in her tail. I did one too, and one of the other ones too, I did go over it with a gold look colored pencil just to give a little gold to her tail and it came out really pretty also. And there she is all colored. Now I'm going to assemble the card. I cut some craft foam to the size of the image as well as to the size of this wonderful holographic paper I got from Michaels. I got it actually on clearance for 19 cents. That's why I decided let's do the mermaid because I have this beautiful paper. Um, the first foam I believe is a little a th three and a quarter by five and a quarter. Because I cut that image down really small because I wanted to see more of the paper than I did of the white of the cardstock. And now I'm going to adhere my back panel to the foam. Sorry for the lighting. For the one day doing a video I actually got some sunlight behind me from my skylight. We're in winter here right now and sun is a rare thing. I made the mistake I put adhesive on that panel before I put the sentiment inside so I want to go back now and put in my sentiment on my stamp perfect. I'm going to position the stamp so it's as straight as can be. This writing isn't very straight anyway so it doesn't really matter. And I'm going to go in with Bahama Blue ink from Memento and I'm just going to stamp up this ink up the stamp so that I can Stamp it down on this cardstock. And I chose the sentiment that came with this stamp. Um, what is meant to be will always find a way. That's a nice thing about Unity. Their stamps usually come with sentiments that are very inspirational. Really cute. Really, you know, beautiful sentiment. Alright, now I'm going to remove this card form from my stamp perfect, let it dry a little bit, and now I'm going to finish up my adhesive on my back panel. as I can. And the one thing I noticed with these people is it looked like fish scales. So thus I thought, what a perfect idea to put the mermaid with it. Because it looked like almost like mermaid scales from the fin. I was almost contemplating doing it in gold and I said, eh, maybe too much gold. position her onto the front and there she is as a card. You can see the double layers of the foam. Let me just tear it down further. The paper is really shiny and pretty. Now I'm going to add some sequins just to give her some more shine. I brought out three types and I decided I liked the way the 
small iridescent look on her tail versus the pink holographic that I have next to me. Um, I will end up using these blue ones on the bottom. I just felt the pink ones were too big for the area I was trying to put them in. These little iridescent ones are just adorable. I am possibly going to end up buying some for the shop later on. Um, I bought them to test because I always like to test out my products before I buy them. And before I sell them to you. I'm showing them. Also, you see I have these cute little containers. These are actually by Derice. They're through Michael's. They are actually in a bigger kit. You get a little box with 52 of them in there, and they are just awesome. They're actually found in the beading supplies, but they work great for storing your sequins and enamel dots. So if you do end, buy, end up buying some from us, and you're like, how can I store all these sequins? Go check out Michael's. I think it's like $12.49, and you get 52 containers. I like that I can take out the little containers and lay them around me as I'm working versus having a whole big container that I might end up spilling. And they're easy to access because they have such a big top flap. And I'm using these blue iridescent, well actually they're actually a holographic, um, as bubbles around her because, you know, not all bubbles are the same size. I just feel putting a little bit of sequins on a card adds a little bit more element of shine and sparkle as the card moves. And I am hearing these with my Ranger Multimedium so that they hold very well. Look at that sparkle. All right, on to the next card. This is one that I colored on plain white cardstock. I'm putting a layer of sparkle craft foam. It actually is self-adhesive. And I'm just pushing it down onto the card form. This one I'm just gonna leave as a note card, so I'm not gonna add a sentiment inside. And I'm gonna adhere the front panel on, just make sure she's really adhered. I got this craft foam over at Walmart. It's very inexpensive. It is self-adhesive. It has a little bit of a gold star speck in it, which is really cute. And I am going to embellish it now with some more of those little iridescent sequins. These are in a green blue mix. They're very pretty. stick these sequins down on there. I'm just going to do it randomly, at least I can do the other one just for bubbles. as simple as I can because like I said it's just gonna be a little note card and there it is with all the bubbles the simple easy way to make a card
For my next card, I'm going to be using another Unity Stamp Company stamp called Thank You Kindly. And for this one, I'm going to use the bear image. So I got some regular Neenan white cardstock. I stick it in my stamp perfect, just like I did with the previous layer. This one I cut in more of a square versus a rectangle. And I believe it was a four by five square. And you can see this one has the same liney design on it as the other one did, as the mermaid. Um, and these are of course the distress markers coming back out. And these are the colors I chose for this one. I'm not going to actually show the coloring process on this because you've already seen it. So we're now we're going to go right into the coloring. Um, so here I am with my touch markers again. And I'm going to start with the lightest color and start coloring. I really love this little image. It is the cutest image. The bear has so much detail and the little girl is just adorable. And I don't know why I always color her as a redhead, but for some reason she just makes me think she's going to be a redhead. And here I am coloring her little dress. I mean, this is, is also an image just like the mermaid that you could leave alone and use just as a sketch and it would look very gorgeous. But I, of course, want to do these cards with a little bit more color in them. One thing about the touch markers, the lids are just not truthful to the color. Um, nor do they follow in a consensual little line where you can blend the colors. So I do often have to test them, which is fine. Majority of the time, I don't do too much shading, so it's pretty easy. But do enjoy them. I'm starting to learn how to color with the Copic type markers better than I have before. And sooner or later I might invest in a Copic marker. So I'm finishing up coloring the bear, making sure I get in all the spots I want to color that color. All right, and now we're going to color the trees. I'm doing it with like almost a greenish brown. So they look like young trees versus more aged trees. They look like little saplings to me. I'm putting more of the, leaving it kind of plain so that the details really go into the picture more than the background. And now we're going to do the grass and the trees in a grass green. I'm getting around her feet and the bear's feet. Sure, I get all the little leaves. There's tons of little leaves in this stamp. But I'm just going to highlight the ones that really need the color. Because, of course, some of the embossing she'll show the color underneath it. And that will be this little picture. You can see how cute the little girl and the bear is. Now for this card, I looked, cut down my little panel that I colored down. Um, and I felt like 
it needed to have a little bit more done to it. I'm also going to put it on a gold foil, almost animal print background with a craft cardstock card. But I'm going to take some brushed corduroy distress ink and just go around the edges of this image just to give it more of a distressed look. And like always, it's always good to test it first and try to go from the furthest end off the paper and go in because you can always put more ink but you can't take it away. And I'm just going to keep on going around these edges until they are saturated to where I like it. Alright, so we're finishing up this distressing on the edges of this thing of this panel. It's looking a lot more antique, which is what I was looking for, especially since there's lots of brown in the paper and in the card. So now I felt like the card needed a little bit more detail. So I'm going to tie some brown baker's twine around the top into a little bow, just to give it a little bit more detail. This one I'm not going to be doing any sequins or anything on, so I figured the bow will give it a little bit more dimension. So I'm going to just tie this bow into a small little bow, and here I am trying to fiddle with it, trying to get it to sit straight. The little paper that I'm using in the back was also from Recollections. Um, they had it on sale at Michael's and it's just so adorable. It's got rabbits and bears and butterflies and deer. And they're all gold embossed. I felt it really went with this four scene with the bear. So now I'm going to cut off the ends of my twine now that I get it positioned to the size I want. Actually, first we're going to glue it. I usually use glue dots behind my bows, but this time I decided to use a little bit of liquid glue just to hold it better. And I'm going to put some tape on the back side to hold the twine down. Now I'm going to cut the twine and I'm going to adhere this panel of course to a craft, white craft foam piece just to lift it. Here I am coming in with a roller to get it set in. The nice thing about taping down your twine is when you're putting your roller over it, at least it won't put unposition your your twine as you're rolling over it. And here comes in the craft foam. Now I'm going to add adhesive to my back panel. Next step is I'm going to get my stamp perfect and I'm going to actually put my sentiment in it. And for this one I chose the sentiment that came with the kit and it says thank you kindly. One thing I like about the grids on the stamp perfect is you can make sure your words are indeed lined up. Especially when I have stamps like this that are the red rubber. They are hard to see through so you can't really see if you're positioned straight. But the grids do help you line it up. And 
I'm going to be doing that in the Rich Cocoa by Memento. So I'm going to lay that silet dry. I'm going to get my panel ready. I'm just going to hear it flat right onto the card form instead of propping it up this time. I felt this one sat better, so it, it really adhered well to the card. It's still not sitting right. All right, so now I'm going to put some more adhesive on the back of the craft foam. That way I can stick this front panel right on top of the card. And for this paper and also the gold paper on the first one, I wanted more of the paper to show then the image itself so that they could see the detail on the paper. And I noticed that I had a little bit more excess than I thought on the bow, so I'm going to fix it quickly again. And that is card number three. Alright, now I'm going to show you a bonus card, and the reason I want to show you this bonus card is because I made a big flump, and I wanted you to see how to fix a mistake if you did actually forget to put your sentiment inside your card before you put all your layers on. And I did. So you could do it by acrylic block, I mean yes, but sometimes your stamping just does not come out perfect. As much as I tried to line it back up to get a second imprint, as you see, it didn't come out for good the first time, so I'm trying to do it a second. It kind of got blurry. All right, so now when you have this issue, there's a simple solution to this. Just take some simple white printer paper or any white paper you would like to use Take your stamp positioner, or you can even do this with acrylic block. Realign your sentiment. And, oop, and of course take off any previous stamps you had. And stamp it onto that white paper. This also works good if you have a card that is a dark color, like a black or a navy that colors just do not show on. Just print it on a white piece of paper and adhere it into your card. So that's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to take it off my thing, let it dry a little. Of course, stamping on the thin paper, it does dry faster, so you don't have to worry about smearing. But as you see, look, I just did. I just covered up the mistake. So don't worry if you go, oh crud, I forgot the inside sentiment. No worries. Quick, easy fix. Or if you make a mess up in your card, printing the sentiment on acrylic block, no worries, just do it again. And there's that card. This one came out really pretty. It used the same color thing on there as I did on the previous one. Alright, and thanks for watching, and like always, don't forget to like and subscribe!